How you doing? Yeah. Just wanted to start a moment of appreciation, telling you thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? Right back at you. Can you guys hear me? Appreciate you guys. Just want to say thank you for Abraham, Esther, and Jerry. You guys have been a great help with me manifesting. I've learned oh, a lot. it's going way past all of that. In other <laughs> words, what's going on? There's a synergy happening with the combining of everything that you all want and your inner beings that are in on this. You belong to the invincible ones. You really do. In other words, you really can be or do or have anything that you want. You can. We're not kidding you. We're not kidding you. This, this is proof of I raised my hand knowing I get picked and I got picked. Yep. Um, I kind of showed up late to get a front seat, but I still end up sitting front row, so it still yeah. worked out for me. <laughs> so, interesting, works. isn't it? Interesting, isn't it? Very interesting sometimes. Um, quick question. Connecting those dots matters a lot. Connecting those dots, feeling that, and then having that outcome, and just playing that over and over and over and over, that's a really good set point to establish a vibrational point of attraction, and it'll show up in all kinds of other ways in your life experience. Yeah. I have a question about asking and forgetting, asking and it's given versus relaxing and then not asking and something still great. Yeah, comes. it's weird. It's like contradiction. It, yes, it's so, because we're schizophrenic. So that's my that's what my question. So, do you really have to ask, or is it already like you say your vortex? Everything you ask for is already in there. It's already ready for you. All you have to do is relax the body, and it comes to you. It sometimes feels like eggs. You have to define it. You have to define your focus. And whether you use words, you don't have to put words to it. The reason that we talk about using words is because once it has some momentum going and you begin to use more words, then there's more ownership and therefore more satisfaction in the unfolding. Then you feel more of the personal involvement and empowerment and hands in the clay. But really... When life shows you something that you want and you don't do that thing that keeps something that you want from being active in your vibration, then it comes. Then it comes. You see that around you. Animals are really good at that. And many of the people that you know are good at that. Give us more about your question. Okay, so a couple of years back, I kind of said to the universe, I wanted something more, I wanted a stable, I, I come from the music industry. I, I've worked in the music industry for like 13 years, some of the top artists. I kind of didn't like the direction it was going versus, I come from rap music, drill music, so I didn't like the negative energy that comes with it. So I kind of asked for something new, and the universe gave me a hair slide. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's been, it's been... Well, that's because you weren't asking for what you wanted you were telling the universe what you didn't want. And what you were saying is not the rat race, something more controllable, something more in my control. Here's the thing. We're just going to be really blunt with you. When you get energy moving at a velocity like you have going, you're not asking to slow it down. Focus on the idea of a tug of war. When you want something but and there are pros and cons to almost everything it's like it's really fun to be here but you got to get on an airplane to get here and it's really fun to be here but esther has a new bed in her place that she wants to be in it <laughs> every night of the world and she can't bring it to, and the bed in this hotel is the very worst bed that she has ever been in in her life experience and so there is wanted and then there is the absence of something wanted so you have to come to this place where what you want is so vivid and so satisfying and so active and so complete that the things that you don't like become irrelevant to you because they're not active enough in your vibration to even notice them that sounds weird doesn't it but that's exactly what it is so talk to us about the music business just for a minute about the downside of it that drove you into a hair salon okay. well um well i'm from chicago so we have this music called drill music so I'm a, I'm a marketer. I start uh, pretty much market for every top record label you could think of. So um, the drill music was starting a lot. Of, a lot of people are. How can I say this? I feel like it, it manifests death in the in, in urban communities. 
I could pretty much. It was a lot about protest. It was a lot yeah. about unwanted. It was a lot about pushing against. But we're talking about what you learned about the music business, what you learned about promotion, what you learned about focus, what you learned about taking someone and carrying them to another place. In other words, it doesn't matter what the specific of the music was. You learned how to do something that you could do with any kind of music. So through that experience, you felt like you were not promoting what's true to who you were. Really are what is true to who you really are. What do you want to activate in your bag of marbles that, through the music business, you would like to activate in the bags of marbles of people all over the world? What is it? Hmm. Um. I. I well, actually, Mark. I kind of just stumbled into marketing too. I didn't. I really. That kind of just came out of blue as well. I didn't. Kind of just fell in my lap. I didn't really. So, was there anything it. about it that you liked? Um. I got to go on tour a lot. Uh, meet. Go around the world, meet new people, uh, the money, uh, uh, the perks that come with working in the music industry. So yeah, how do the perks of the hair salon compare? Ah, uh, much better. Um, much better? Everyone comes out, anybody that comes in the hair salon, they leave happier. Um, nobody's no violence. The money is even better. Uh, so, I can expand. <laughs> I can go on and on. Are you saying to us that the universe knows what you've really put into the vortex even better than you do? Yes. That's, that's what it feels like every time, yes. And that's a problem? No, 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 no. My, 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 my problem was more so does accent sometimes contradict it? Does accent sometimes cause a contradiction? Versus it is already being there, you can just relax and it comes Well, to... the way we've been telling that story for a long time is... So you build this fantastic house and it seems like it's everything that you want and it satisfies many things and then you realize that it doesn't have enough closets. And so then you build another house and you make sure that you got plenty of closets but you realize you forgot about the kitchen. In most cases, as you get specific, this is the question that we really thought you were going to ask because it's a schizophrenia that people feel from us often as we talk about deliberate creation and then we talk about the art of allowing. We talk about scripting yourself into creation and then we talk about ask and then just get out of the way and let it be. But it is just what you've demonstrated through your conversation here. It's living life that makes you define what it is that you do want. And sometimes you're drawn to something because it looks it's like it's like what we were talking about with our friend earlier about finding a mate there's some aspect of it that looks like it's really what you want but the other elements aren't there and you don't know it until you're living it most people would rather have negative emotion than no emotion at all because it feels like something at least is happening in the negative emotion well that's not wrong thinking because when you really know what you don't want you really know what you do want so earlier did you hear us we say it all the time and we said it maybe not as well as we often do that when you're living something and putting things into your vortex that your inner being knows what you've put there even though you do not it is as valuable to know what you don't want as it is to know what you do want let's just start right there it is as valuable to know what you don't want as it is to know what you do want because the other end of the stick is always there so when it was like too negative or it was promoting too much of something that you didn't want it caused you to launch rockets of desire that said something more like what more like you want to be of value more like you want to be an uplifter more like that what do you think you've heard from us here today did you hear anything from us about what you're supposed to do or what you should do or what choices you should make or is what you heard from us once you've made a choice line up with that choice and let the universe yield it to you we said earlier we've been saying this a lot that your inner being knows where you are whether you're a marker in that music business or whether you are guiding or participating in or owning or branching out in the hair salon wherever you are your inner being knows where you are exactly in relationship to what's in your vortex and often you do not know that but your inner being does so your inner being is always calling you 
the words that we've been using forever are calling you around, over, under, through your path of least resistance until you get over there. And what did we say earlier today? What was one of the strong things that was happening in this room? I'll know it when I see it. I'll know it when I see it. So much is in the vortex is a vibrational reality that you can't see. But you were called and you said the universe put you in a hair salon and now you're telling us you really like being there. So are you telling us you know it now that you see it? Sounds like a perfect scenario to us, doesn't it to you? Do you think you're done? Or do you think that there are things about that that you like and things about that that you don't like? And do you think that you are amending your vortex? And do you think that your inner being knows still more that you want? And that your inner being knows how much of what you want you can get from the current thing that you've got going on and how much is going to have to evolve into something else? Don't be surprised when you find yourself involved in something else and saying that's even more satisfying still. What is it that makes any of you think that it is your job to stand right here where you are and point out into your future and define specifically where you want to be? Don't you want it to evolve? Don't you want to have your own hands in the clay? As you presented this to us, you didn't start out even with your scenario to us that I was doing something that I didn't really like to do and it led me to something that I adore doing. Do you adore doing what you're doing? Yes. See there? Wouldn't that have been an easier story to tell? <laughs> so what do you think made you tell the story the other way? Does it confuse you that you ended up in something that is so right even though you didn't specifically outline and define it? And that's why we ask, do you mean that your inner being knows your true heart and knows who you really are and knows what you really want and will lead you there and you will know it when you see it? Of course, yes. Was it a struggle to move from one to the other? Uh, they both actually kind of fell in my lap. The marketing then, I was walking down the street, seeing the tour bus, it said something to them and they hired me. That's how the law of attraction works, isn't it? In other <laughs> yeah. words, we want you all to hear that. Did you hear that? And did you know it when you saw it for a while? It was just the next logical step and then the next logical step and then the next logical step. So what does this say to you? What are you getting from this? What is this saying to you? Is this shifting your understanding a little bit of deliberate creation? Is this sort of shifting you into a place maybe that feels a little bit more like things are supposed to work out for you and that they always are working out for you and doesn't it make you want to ask the question of yourself why am i making that such a shocking surprising thing it's more so sometimes the things the universe like i said i ask for things and the universe kind of gives me something better that's because what's in your vortex is outside the box and it's always better than what's inside the box. That's what the expansion of the universe is about. That's why you never get it done. That's why you never get it done. If we were standing in any of your shoes where somebody says, what do you do? What do you do? They want to pigeonhole you into an explanation of their words are really, how do you justify your existence through your activity? <laughs> That's actually what they're saying to you. What do you do? And if you start offering them things that you really mean, like I do what feels like the most exciting thing to do in the moment. <laughs> and they say, like our friend earlier, but that doesn't seem very responsible. And you say, oh, I'm not about responsibility. <laughs> I'm not about responsibility because that sounds like satisfying somebody else's intentions for me. I'm about inspiration. I'm about creation. I'm about intuition. I'm about inspiration. I'm about expansion. I'm about more. I'm about variety. Variety has always pleased me. I'm an expansive being and most people wouldn't be able to hear that but we want you all to hear that that's what's been going on here if you like this video don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next video